It's Warcraft Day. Greetings everybody, this is Stormy with the capital Z coming back at you with another replay request. This is going to be a replay request by none other than Jockey and it is going to be another 2 vs 2 battle net encounter uh, with him allying up with his longtime ally Azzy or rather Eugiritri. They're going to be taking on the team of purple or well this is some, somewhat between purple and pink. This is purple, surely purple. <laughs> Purple human over here, opening up with what seems to me like a pally rifle build order here. And ooh, double human LL Cool J Smith. We're just gonna call him Cool Smith because that's just easier to pronounce over here. And Cool Smith over seems to be opening up with a standard human build order, although the building placement seems to be rather wacky. I would not place my buildings like this as a human player ever. Hashtag playing humans for 10 years. <laughs> All right, so we got Jockey on the top, Dwork, his ally, the Nidal player. Now, I wasn't actually going to be streaming today. It's kind of late over here. I kind of got up late and everything. Uh, well, late for me to stream, what I say, not actually up to the time. But since Jockey had asked uh, nicely, I was like, all right, let's let's just have a, stream, a, a game or two so that we'll have something across and my only loyal fan, Jockey, would also get to enjoy the game. And there he is. Reforged! Alright, Farsi are coming in by Jockey. Tree is going to go in for Demon Hunter. Of course, Jockey sir, is going to be slightly late because he went in for the delayed altar. On the other side, we're going to have Blood Mage. Interesting. And Paladin. Yep. That's going to be a pally rifle build, although where's the barracks? We need the barracks. Going in for advanced, uh, or rather improved lumber harvesting first. We're going to plant uh, Wisp at a nice location there. You definitely want to have that uh, barracks down first, in my opinion. Not really sure if uh, you want to, you want to have the lumber mill down. I, I don't know. I, I haven't really learned the rifleman, rifleman build myself, so I wouldn't be able to say. Uh, Jockey and Tree have done their scouting. Uh, I wouldn't really say the same about Team Purple. Oh, get units across there. Ah, oh, there we go. Eon Steve, how can we forget about him? As hard as he, uh, as hard as he tries, he does somehow manage to get engaged with a footman and... Ooh, footman! Or rather, Peon Steve will survive! He heading in with his Demon Hunter there. Going after the Paladin, but Paladin has a Divine Shield up his sleeve, just for a while. Cat does have an opening over there for the Demon Hunter to enter. He's gonna stay out there, try to whack upon those farms a bit. Mana burn going down, he already tried to detonate one of the Wisps on the Paladin, so we have a lot of mana lost, and ooh, Blood Mage gonna siphon up some mana from the Blood, uh, from the Demon Hunter and gonna give him a taste of his own medicine. We got some Rush coming in. Jockey sending down his feral spirits after the blood mage. Blood mage taking a lot of hits. That's not supposed to be tanking too much damage. Gonna be sucking up some mana from the Farseer now. And that's gonna disengage the Farseer for a bit. But the Farseer will manage to just uh, run away from the range of that and then come back into the fight without uh, having too much mana sucked away. Riflemen are definitely delayed over here. This uh, build definitely doesn't seem to be the right one. Uh, tree coming in with some Huntresses, so this is gonna be Huntresses plus uh, Headhunters. Uh, Jockey still had some Headhunters back at his base. Should get them into the fight right now, and Demon Hunter is gonna be faster. He's gonna get to the Blood Mage. One more hit will kill the Blood Mage, and there's no use of the TP over here, because the TP is just gonna land him into his own base, if that's a panic TP. If he could uh, a TP towards his ally, maybe that could work out. Jockey setting down a Voodoo Lounge right in the middle of their opponent's bases, and this Voodoo Lounge is gonna help them so much. Healing salves, speed scrolls, clarity potions, they're gonna be on a roll right now. The region is just going to be crazy. What would be good for Jockey and Tree is that they should actually try and take out a couple of those towers before they set up. One of the towers are cinched in, the bases are gonna be a bit difficult to deal with. I'm gonna cancel a farm there and go after the altar there. Altar will definitely spawn the blood mage before uh, if it gets down, if it falls down. Most likely it's not gonna happen. Here comes the blood mage, trying to suck on some mana from those uh, heroes. Lot of mana being sucked from the demon hunter, we don't really want having no mana now. 
to cast any kind of mana burns. There you go. Demon Hunter tasting a ta uh, getting a taste of his own medicine with that Daki entry. Although, seem to want to dedicate to try and take out the altar there. If they manage to take out the altar, I believe you cannot tech up. Yeah, I think I think that's how it works. I think you cannot tech up, or I think it's the one for tier two. Gonna have to check that up later on. So the altar has been taken out, and more mana being sucked there from the hero of uh, Jockey. A lot of mana was lost, but they, are, but uh, Team Purple uh, is the one that's losing momentum and losing ground over here. They're like, yeah, sure, you can suck the mana. I don't really mind. Paladin attack. coming in from the other side, and uh, all the mana that's being sucked right now, uh, which by the way almost got overcharged there on the Blood Mage, could actually be uh, put down toward the Paladin. And oh, what do we have here? Jockey's heading down a tower near the Voodoo Lounge, and he was making a second one as well. And he's making a second one once before, but after that one got cancelled. I don't know if like, having more than one tower is really useful, or having even one of them is really necessary in this case over here. Uh, Rakhlam being picked off, Jockey and Tree getting a bit sandwiched over here, but they definitely have more number of forces to deal with their opponents. Blood Mage better get taken out for the second time, just need some more, bit more speed to get there. Speed scroll would be immensely useful over here. You have the shop there, make use of it. In such situations, you want to use the speed scroll, and oh, you had the Paladin right in the corner there, you should have taken it out. Uh, Demon Hunter gonna be forced to use the TP to get out of there. Uh, could that easily just ran it away in my opinion so now jockey is going to be left alone but he will manage to take out the paladin which had which didn't really try to go for divine shield or the tp unless until divine shield was under um cooldown i was going to go towards this uh shop near the towers there second tower almost up there and this is rather an interesting play making a mini base near your opponent's base with a tower rush and a shop that's going to be super immensely useful the tower uh, well the tower kills are not going to be giving jockey any experience that's a little bad for him but it will definitely help him take out the units a lot of footmen are on low hp now that one getting taken out jockey needs to try and focus down those footmen one by one once you have them down the rifleman will be easier with the, the melee fellow spirits or more and more headhunters being taken out. Jockey, what are you doing? You need headhunters uh, tier 2. Some buildings being put down for 3. Uh, Ancient of Wind and Ancient of Lore. So 3 is going in for double over there. That's interesting. From what I know, 3 doesn't really main Nidal. So he isn't really the best Nidal player out there either. Here comes 3 with a couple of... Uh, or rather a trio of Huntresses. And those Huntresses will help them take out those Riflemen with the normal damage. Uh, drive them away for the time being and this is the time when jockey and tree need to hit hard on cool smith cool smith is down and out he doesn't have his hero ready his units are few in number and the only thing is defending him is like two arcane towers back there uh it appears that they're gonna change direction and go towards the other guy purple purple is gonna have to deal with jockey and tree at the same time now mana burning going down on that paladin paladin probably doesn't have enough mana to use divine shield or holy light even if he has them in a, a out of cooldown that is uh yeah definitely want to take out that tower once you have that tower down you're gonna be able to effectively harass the base uh, getting the range units on of that, uh, getting some range units on that would be beneficial. And here comes uh, Coolsmith going after the mini base of Jockey and try and take that out. Uh, the Paladin taking a lot of damage, getting blocked by his own rifleman. Coming back into the fight, but uh, Tree also backing out a bit. Uh, here's the thing about riflemen versus huntresses. Riflemen are definitely going to be uh, able to tear the huntresses apart. Looking at the damage and hp there unarmored takes more damage from piercing and there's a lot of piercing damage although the medium armor does take extra damage from normal attacks of the huntresses so you do have a situation there where uh it will all depend it's all gonna depend on who would have the better micro the bigger numbers perhaps the better upgrades and for the time being it appears that purple has the better upgrade so so far, Jockey and Tree have been pushing their opponents with all they have. They haven't been creeping at all. Uh, the heroes are already uh, nearing level 3. And they have been keeping their opponents at bay. The opponents so far have been able to do little to much nothing. Haven't, they haven't even been able to venture out of their bases at all. Uh, Jockey and 
still well jockey entry basically the front line of this uh, human base is pretty well guarded if they actually find a way from you know across these trees perhaps try to get uh, one of the ancients to eat up the trees or like um get some sort of a demolisher siege weapon and uh, get through those trees they can actually cripple the gold line there and the opponent won't be able to do too much i mean this def uh, this line of defense is pretty good but it's this is only for the front if you if you actually manage to go into the back line there there is nothing your opponent can do about it and there's really no defense there i wouldn't really say the same about schoolsmith coolsmith has uh this is actually a pretty good defense <laughs> two arcane towers in the back line come in the front so that's what you have there and uh, we have an engagement no we have jockey and free creeping on the middle uh goblin merchant camp over here does this drop the sentry ward i'm getting confused between a couple of maps there no, this map does not have sentry ward on this camp, so that's just gonna give them the advantage of the shop there. So Jockey, after losing the shop, gonna secure the shop with the Goblin Merchant for the time being. And it appears that they seem to want to push in with a couple of Dryads this time. Dryads are not gonna be the answer to Rifleman for sure. Uh, Jockey needs to go for the range, Tree needs to go in for, uh, the, me for the melee with the uh, bears or mountain giants. That should work out against this combination. Bears should be able to tank a lot of damage and the backline headhunters uh, should be able to sustain much better against riflemen since they have the medium armor as opposed to the unarmored armor. And uh, the hunters are gonna fall real easily to the riflemen. Here comes the first mountain giant for three. And uh, that's gonna try and get in there. Perhaps get a taunt across. Needs to get a taunt across. Chain lighting across the board. Uh, Hex on the paladin. This does not look good. Where is his ally, the blood mage? Coming in with an arch mage, a second hero. Rushing towards their uh, allies' base to try and save them. No use of TP though. Still has the TP. Still has the TP there. He hasn't used it. Uh, he lost his hero about twice and he hasn't used the TP. He could have used the TP right now to try and save his ally and that would have been beneficial for him. Although he really doesn't have too many units. That's something you want to consider. Oh, big chain lighting going across. Oh, the demon hunter getting weak. Demon hunter taking a lot of damage. This does not look good for Tree and Jockey. Going across uh, hex on the paladin once again. That paladin has been pinned down so far. The paladin, I don't think I've seen a single holy light come out of that paladin as of yet. There have been so much mana burn, and there we go. Berserker upgrade for those headhunters. The trolls are going to be rocking in with that damage and extra speed with the berserker. Berserker upgrade there. Paladin gets murdered there. Jockey going after the farm, but they should be trying to take out that scout uh, tower bit that's being upgraded. That's going to be easy to take out. Uh, take that out, then take out the guard towers. Take out the towers. Like definitely, you definitely just want to murder the towers right now. Once you have them down, then uh, this this fight can actually come into your favor. Uh, more more mountain giants coming in, and yes, Jockey and Tree doing exactly what I said they should be doing, going in with those beefy mountain giants in the front line tanking all the damage there having a staff reservation on your hero would be a good idea although you don't really have much time to go back to your base but you could not get one backpack you get a second hero to try and get uh, that hit across and uh, shadow hunter is gonna be sucked dry uh, right before it hexed that uh, blood mage no mana there so kind of mission accomplished for him this is looking bad for cool smith and purple losing a lot of units in the front line there they have the towers up but that is pretty much it if jockey and tree perhaps get a couple of siege weaponry they should be able to push through the these tower lines the towers are really all that's keeping uh purple and uh Poolsmith alive in this game right now jockey and tree gaining some momentum getting some level ups uh the farseer is likely going to be level four now and ethereal form for the mountain giant okay i haven't seen that one so since a while Mountain Giant entering ethereal form will of course deal no damage but and take no damage either but they can still be there and cast the spell. The taunt they can cast the taunt but of course the taunt will not pull any damage in because nothing can actually damage it in ethereal form or, and, apart from spells and magic damage. Uh, jockey entry need to be a bit careful this choke point is actually leading to the death of the mountain giants 
not lose the mountain giants they don't want to lose it one mountain giant down that's gonna give a massive amount of experience for their opponents and a massive loss for them uh okay the jockey and tree actually have a good option right now just pick up some trees okay the mountain giants can actually go through th this area as well if they pick up the trees they don't need to do that nah, that is right now because they already have this front line secured they need to pick up the trees though if they pick up the trees they're gonna be able to do deal siege damage which range across the board and that's gonna be a lot pick them trees up get the siege damage down and break those buildings down Paladin gonna go Divine Shield, but this game is pretty much over. I don't really see their opponents coming back from this right now. They got Berserk coming in for the Berserkers. The trolls of the Bokish army for Jockey here. Gonna go in, deal more damage there. Uh, it's a funny trade-off of there. And what is this? He's TPing away? He's being attacked? He is being attacked. And he's gonna TP into his opponent. Just gonna go after those uh, casters one by one. I don't think he lost any of the burrows. Force is gonna force the TP on purple. And what is he doing? Tree needs to pick up those trees with. Uh, tree needs to pick up those trees. Yeah, that that's a fun. Uh, he needs to pick up the trees with the mountain giant there and needs to get the siege damage down. Jockey forcing away his opponent. Uh, now going to take some time to buy some items, redo any his units, and then get back into the fight. Yeah, picking up the. Trees would be a good idea, really. If you have those trees, they, that, that would just be much, much more beneficial. But yeah, I don't really see Purple uh, and Coolsmith coming back from this, although Coolsmith does seem to have a sizable army. That's really not going to be enough to actually deal with Jockey and Tree together. Uh, would be, he would rather face difficulty even facing one of them. And uh, okay, the Paladin is still alive there. Anadar, the healer. And there we go, Tree finally picking up some siege. Getting some siege damage across on those on the town hall there, but yeah, he kinda did it a bit late. But now he's gonna use that to destroy the buildings. Here comes the opponents, and here comes Jockey from the back line. Jockey gonna be a slightly late, but it should be enough. Uh are being aerial, rather banished for a bit. I'm not really sure if that actually benefited Jock, uh, Tree or their opponents. There comes Jockey from the back line and this game is pretty much over. They have their, their opponent sandwiched up in the middle and here comes Bloodlust. Wow, Bloodlust is just going to be extremely, extremely devastating against their opponents. Although they're trying to steal some damage, uh, some of the spells too. Coolsmith leaves the game and this is game. Well, that was a nice 2v2. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and listening. If you have enjoyed what you have seen, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more, and I will be seeing you. Craft. Yay.